Hello and welcome back. I hope you guys are having a, another fantastic morning or evening. And uh, let's say this morning I'm going to do some, you know what? Uh, I just did a video on Camelback Tumblr. I think you guys may saw this morning about the review on this product. They're fantastic. Actually, it, did, uh, it does really great job uh, keeping the, the liquid really warm inside for hours and hours. So I really enjoy this mug. Not the mug, but tumbler. But also they have the camping mug as well. Okay, so pretty much there. So imagine this: they're gonna chop the top up and put the handle on it. So that is a camping mug. Pretty much identical, I identical installation, vacuum seal inside as well. They're just well made. Okay, as we can see from again the vacuum insulator so you know keep it's pretty much keep the hot so keep the hot liquid hot and the cold stuff cold so so this is great time uh, great for especially in winter time or summer time for this tumbler as well so i mean they're pretty fantastic but people ask me actually i did not do the spirit test on it so uh, this morning i'm going to do some spirit test so this is according to camera bag so this is not spirit proof but spirit resistant because the fact is you don't want to be spirit proof because you put the hot liquid in it if this is all airtight it's going to build the pressure so you don't want that so i'm going to, I'm going to give you a close look on this one so with on the top as you can see they're pretty airtight but you see there the tiny hole uh, kind of like this tiny hole kind of escaped the all the, the steam and the pressure so you need it so i don't think you cannot have so, uh, everything airtight so here's what we're gonna do hold on i need i need to i need to remove the top i'm gonna put some water in it and then let's do some test on it okay so put some water I'm gonna put so I got water here and then I'm just gonna put it in. So at this point everything is all airtight. Not the airtight, but it's all tight. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn it upside down. Okay, so let's take a look. I'm just gonna upside down. So pretty much somewhat, you know, I mean it doesn't there's no water coming out from the top. In reality, is we're not gonna walking around with a cup like this, okay? So most likely this and then sideways maybe. So it comes to spear resistant, definitely works, okay? But if you are camping, most likely you are going to open the this uh, lip here. So when you are drinking, so you are going to like kind of like spin around. So let's take a look. Oops. Definitely, we're gonna spill this if if the the mouse is open. Yep, yeah. So it's not completely spill proof, but definitely does a good job with the spill resistance for sure. So I mean, I really like this so far. I mean, I really enjoyed the tumbler yesterday. I mean, I had a I had it for about four or five hours. After five hours, still the coffee is still warm to drink. First three hours, actually literally pretty hot. So, and then obviously same thing for the coffee mug as well because they did the exactly same techno technology behind it. So, I mean, feels really good to hold. They're fantastic. I'm gonna put the link down below as well. So if you guys are looking for good tumbler and camping mug, make sure you look into it. And this is actually the fantastic Christmas gift. So. And, uh, and it's going to be Christmas or holiday gifts as well. So I know if you don't celebrate Christmas, we've got Hanukkah is coming up. So, I mean, you know, again, great for holidays. Is there an aftertaste? I know sometimes Someone asked me, is there aftertaste? Mm -hmm. Is there you? No, somebody Okay. Asked. Okay, someone asked me, is there aftertaste in coffee? No, this is actually re really nice. Everything inside is all stainless steel, so... There's no aftertaste. I, I really enjoy this, uh, especially this tumbler, fantastic. 
coffee mug. So one thing I'm little concerned about the coffee camping mug because the base is, you know what, let me dump this water out first. Okay, so base is a little wider than uh, tumbler. So tumbler fits perfect in my car. I'm not sure about this camping mug, okay? It might be too white for some cars out there, so white for some cars. And so this is like designed for just kind of outdoor camping. And, and also this handle is getting in the way as well. So this is not the idea for your car, but definitely tumbler and great for outdoor camping. Okay, so this morning, uh, let's, it's really cold outside. It's about 36 degrees right now. Uh, now it's 45. Earlier this morning, this morning was like around 36. Now it's 45, it's really cold. So this is perfect weather for good milk based drink. So let's make that. So we, this morning I'm gonna make some Let's see, uh, cappuccino is really nice. I, I think I'm gonna do the mocha cappuccino. And uh, I just got Kirkland semi-sweet chocolate chips, 51% cocoa, uh, mixed with the real vanilla. Oh, okay. It's about 4.5 pounds of bag here. So I'm gonna use this to make a uh, cappuccino, the you know, mocha cappuccino. More like chocolate cappuccino, so let's do that. Okay. So this morning, I'm, let's see, I'm, I have a, a more uh, copies from Australia. Uh, they send us. So we have Porter Street, Padre Coffee. Let's see, we got Rumber Coffee Roaster. This one is the San Alley Coffee. Hmm. I'm just gonna pick the Copy that the oldest, okay? So this is October 7th, October 12th. So this one is a September, okay? September 18th. So this one is October, okay. So I'm gonna go with a uh, Porter House, Porter Street coffee. Uh, someone asked me, can I dial in two beans at the same time? I'll depend on the, actually, okay, here's the thing about the dialing beans. If you set something today, it's not going to be the same tomorrow. So you have to dial in same beans every single day, just right. So, I mean, but you can dial in somewhat. If one bean at, let's say, setting at number 10, other bean at number 9, but they give you kind of some uh, guideline for you. So, you know, only you have to adjust slightly following there. So again, and that's why most people have two, three grinders at home, okay? And I mean, like I have, I have two right now. I got niche. Actually, you know what? I'm, I have a kind of like two grinder. I got built-in grinder and niche. And the niche is dialed into my specialty coffee. So, and this, uh, this one dialed into something else. So, I mean, you know what you need to have, if you don't do it right, you need to have a two grinder, but again, one grinder is fine. Just just remember what you dialed in once you know one before. So kind of that's a good starting point. So we're gonna do the Porter House, no Porter Street, not the Porter House. Really yes, I'm looking think about steak this morning. Okay, so flavor. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Bold, malty, and dark chocolate. Okay, so it's gonna be really good match with this. Okay, it's gonna be really delicious all right so I think I'm thinking about using I've been using built-in grinder a lot lately so let's do the niche grinder this morning okay yeah let's do niche unless if you guys want me to use uh, built-in but let me know I'm just gonna measure out 17.5 gram here <clears throat> So this one, Pablo, the, okay, Porter Street. So Sydney, Australia. Okay, good. Oh, here we go, Pablo and Rusty. PNR. Okay. 
So I'm going to be using my niche grinder for this. Again, so by the way, so I have, I'm using two scares right now. Here, let me show you. Because the one scale, I'm just purely measure out the dosing amount and using my Akaya scale to just time and the yield. So, so here's what happens. You are getting into like coffee as your hobby because you want to save steps. Because I mean like Akaya scale, you could do uh, both, okay? You could do measure out, but if you want to go, just want to measure out the dosing amount, you have to go through different mode to get there. So like here. So I think that's why I'm using the two scare at the moment. Save, you know, save me some time. Okay. Someone asked me, am I still using my Wally Pop for my home use? Ah, no. Ever since I got the Beemore, I'm just sit there in my, uh, my office right now. So, okay. Smells still good. Okay. So this is roasted on September, let's see, September 29th. So, I mean, there, I just opened it. So, you know, should be good. Okay. So this is medium roast. Uh, actually, it's more like medium to dark. Okay, more, more like medium to dark roast here. I'm going to be doing 17 gram. Why don't you try dialing in with the bottomless pour filter? Someone asked. Someone asked me why don't I dialing with bottomless pour filter? Mm -hmm. You know what? They are, I have to say, they're paying the butter dial then. Okay, you, you have to be just right. So, I like most mornings. I just, I don't want to bother. So I just like to use just to spout it and also spout it, give you more, everything's all nice and hot, okay? Bottomless pour filter has no bottom. So once you extract coffee, uh, pretty much cool down the shot. So th that's also another reason I really enjoy the spout it. Give you a nice hot espresso, okay. So I'm going to dial in 17 gram here. Actually, more like 1709. Okay. All right, so let's... Um. Who, you don't roast your own coffee, someone says? I mean, I do roast my own coffee, but I mean, I mean, thanks to you guys, I know a lot of, like, Dane sent me, like, what, seven bags of coffee. Uh, I know Jose sent me some coffee. I mean, you know, I have a lot of friends out there sending me a lot of beans, so I've been spoiled though by you guys. But I do roast at work as well. I really enjoy roasting my own beans. Okay, okay I got. Hold on, I got, I got 17.09 gram in, I got 16.9 gram out, which means I have some beans stuck there somewhere, okay? I'm just gonna tap it. Even though, I mean, this is somewhat zero retention, but still, once in a while, you gotta so stuck some beans. So now I'm at 16.95 gram, so. I mean, as you can, hopefully, you know what, let me show you about the, the, all the static issues I have with the niche grinder. So you see that all the static built up? So you can use, you can eliminate somewhat with, it's called RDT, the Ross Droplet Techniques. But, I mean, for me, I'm just going to top it a few times. Everything is all nice and just, you know, nice and clean to the side. So I'm not too worried about static. Uh, as long as I use the dosing cup. But if you are doing the direct dosing, yeah, the, you need to worry about the static issue. All right. Do you have a, an, uh, a grinder in mind other than the niche, like in the 300 range? Okay, I think uh, one of our viewers, Bruce, he just got, he got a Bracha Seta 30, okay? 30 for around 250 bucks, 260. So 
that's a really good option. And then down the road, you can modify Bratz uh, set at 30 to 270. Cost you around 90 bucks or so. So you have a lot of options for that as well. So the SATA 30 is really good grinder. So definitely you should look into it. Okay. So at this point. So for grinder sitting on this one, for niche around number 17, 18. So I mean, so this is brand new bean. So I don't know what to expect comes to grinder size. So this is my first shot. So let's see how it goes. Okay. Uh, I do have video on a video on pour over as well. So I have about almost 400 videos on my uh, my channel. So so I think uh, I have a quite a few. Actually, I only have maybe two pour over video, but okay. Salted caramel syrup? Yes, just show it. Someone asked me about this. So this is the uh, Torani I got from World Market in Arizona. Uh, salted caramel is about 10 bucks at the store. Okay, be careful with the pump though. Each pump is gonna be cost you 10 gram of sugar. So, so I mean, that's quite a bit. Okay, so at this point, you know what? Let's pull the shot first. Okay, let's find out what this shot looks like. I'm just gonna flush out some water here. So I'm gonna start time it when first drop hits in the cup. I'm just gonna change the mode on my Akaya scale. Okay. So I'm looking for Again, 34 gram, between like 34 and 35 gram. Extraction time around 20 seconds. Here we go. Okay, that's way too fast. The pressure is good, but yeah, speed is too fast. Lots of crema though. So we got 36 gram at 6, 17 seconds, 18. So we got 18 seconds. So that's something, one thing you have to play with because I mean, most people have different thoughts about the when do you start time, okay? So a Kaya scale does both. You, you can start time when I press the button or when uh, first drop hits in the uh, glass, in the cup here. Because once I start the time, even this 18 second shot, but if you gotta figure around seven to eight second pre-infusion time, so in reality, this is more like 25 second shot. So, so that's something you have to play with what's right for you comes to taste wise so let's try this so everything said and done so it's all about your taste okay cheers yeah yeah somewhat bitter not the bitter but a little sour it's not the bring out all the flavor there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to adjust my grinder size to more like a couple notch down. Even though that's a step less grinder, but they give you this kind of like guideline. So I'm just gonna go down a little bit, okay? Yeah, just a little, not too much. And then we're gonna do another shot. Actually, actually I think we are ready for uh, mocha. Okay, so puck is nice and dry. So, I mean, that's the great thing about using fresh beans. But thing is, I mean, I don't usually waste coffee 
because even though it, if we, even though this is not a perfect shot you know because i mean most of us we don't want to waste it so i usually drink this anyway i usually make this like americano so okay i'm just going to again uh, another 17 gram here so you, let's use the niche again so again pretty much a niche grinder or built-in grinder is going to be the same process okay okay from here we got again we got the Porter Street from Pablo and Rusty's so how's the weather in Australia now you guys are opposite to us I think so is that summer time for you guys okay Got my beans here. I'm going to be using two percent milk instead of a uh, whole milk Oops. okay just make sure I got all the beans out okay perfect all right I'm just gonna do one more time okay I got 17 gram dosing okay so I'm looking for again same around 34 gram let's try to shoot for hopefully we're gonna get that in around 20 seconds I'm gonna use my not neutral cup here so you always get static? I always get static on my uh, my niche grinder Plus, Arizona is really dry anyway in first place, so, okay. So let's do this. Sorry, but this large cup set. This is much better shot this time. I got around 20 seconds. Yeah, so this is shot I was looking for. It's a beautiful shot there. Beautiful crema. So this shot is pretty good. So again, the little, little bit of adjustment on grinder setting makes a big difference. I'm just going to show it down. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is right now, I'm going to put some chocolate in it, okay? Hold on. I'm gonna put about, let's say about 20 grams of chocolate. Hopefully it's gonna be melted by then. Okay. About 20 grams here. I mean, 20, 20 grams sounds like a lot of chocolate, but it's not, okay? Because you figure average Coke or Pepsi, you are looking about, what, 30 grams of sugar. So 20 grams is not bad. I'm okay with it. All right, so let's steam some milk. Okay. okay I'm just going to wait until the pump is kicking and then I'm going to steam it. So now... Here we go. So you hear the pumping, the pumping noise. Just gonna shut it. Just... 
I'm going to do the small latte. So meantime, I have extra hand here. I'm just going to melt my chocolate because I, I need to melt this. I'm just going to stir it. So when milk is ready, you cannot touch it anymore on the bottom. Okay, and the chocolate is almost melt. Not quite. So there we go. It's getting really hot here, so. Okay, hold on a second. I'm just gonna wipe it clean right now with wet towel, flush. Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna finish stirring this. Okay, this is beautiful. And then, you know what? I like to do latte art. I like to switch to separate water, uh, milk jugs. Kind of like remove the, all the air bubble like this. So. so let's do some another latte art here. I think that I usually go try to go fast and the people told me that when you got to really slow down the pool. So. Slow pull. I'm just gonna go slowly. Here I go. Slow. So you're gonna have something like this. I have to say, this one looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's the best one ever. I think so. You know what, let, let me give you guys a close look at my masterpiece. Not bad, guys, don't you think? Yeah, Gang said, great job. Yeah. It's very nice. Yeah, I'm going to shout out to little Jibby to give me a little lesson a while ago. So this is a, a Jibby jug from Australia. So Dane, I mean, if you guys like to play with milk jug, good, good milk jug, check out uh, little Jibby. They're, they're amazing. Okay. So do you have a good Okay, somebody asked me, do I have good, okay, I try a lot of decaf, but recently, uh, friends at Yes Please, okay, I think that's the name of, yeah, Yes Please, decaf, I mean, so Yes Please, still has that this funny aftertaste, but it's not bad, okay, Yes Please is fantastic, I know Good Brothers Coffee has really good decaffeinated coffee as well, they are both come from Colombia too, so. And so they are, they are good. But again, I'm still looking for that really good coffee tasting decaf. So I'm still searching. But yes, please, it's nice. Nice as well. Could the picture be the issue if I'm not getting good milk froth? Someone asked me, is a picture, what, uh, milk picture is the issue? No, actually, you got to introduce the air in the beginning, like between four to five seconds. So once you... Not too much air though, okay? Just, just enough air to, you're gonna create a microphone and give you a really nice, you wanna be, look like wet paint, okay? Like wet paint, so. You know what? Doesn't matter how pretty the cup is, okay? If it doesn't taste good, I mean, what's the point, right? So, cheers. Okay, it's really good. So I got 20 grams of dark chocolate in there. I wonder what happens when, if I'm gonna put one pump of caramel. It's gonna be chocolate caramel. It's a cho uh, salted chocolate caramel uh, latte. Small latte. Here we go. Wow. Wow. Simply. Amazing guys. 
By the way, if you guys are around town, okay, ever come to Arizona, if you ever come to Tucson, look me up, okay? Because I have my coffee bar set up, so I definitely make you guys some coffee. Okay, I, I think we got some questions. How often should I be cleaning the built-in grinder on barista? Someone asked me how often you want to uh, clean the built-in grinder. Personally, I like to clean uh, once a week, okay? Just do the light cleaning and then once a month for the kind of like deep cleaning, okay? So, I mean, whenever you're using, especially you, whenever you're using darker roast, darker roast is very oily, so you want to clean more often than not, so, okay? Okay, so. Um, have you heard anything on the new Super Fasto grinder from Rocket? Uh, rocket grinder? Uh-huh. Super Fausto grinder? Super Fausto grinder from Rocket. I, I have not heard, okay? I know Rocket, I, I, actually the Rocket, yes. Yes, I know what, what you're talking about. It's called uh, Fausto, yes. Uh, so once you reach that point, like over like seven to $800 range there, they got some great grinders, okay? We got the Eureka's, fantastic. Obviously my personal favorite is the Niche. We got Eureka, we got uh, even Rocket makes an awesome grinder. Who else makes really good coffee? I mean, good grinder. Bratza makes really good grinder as well. So it's all about the, how much money you guys want to spend on. And then my personal favorite is the company called Option O, okay? Option O. And they make this amazing, the titanium burr set. They're fantastic as well. So, but. Again, it all depends on the, how much money you guys want to spend. Which GB jug is that? So this is the, the entry level GB jug. I think it's called Warrior. Okay. And this is a smaller size. As you can see, the spout is very narrow. So it'll give you really good control. Okay. And the uh, little GB told me this is really good for like entry level you know, person like me. So they're really nice. And they do have a lot of Chinese knockoff as well on Amazon. So it all depends on your budget. It's not cheap, okay? It's not cheap. But if, if you guys like to play with the latte art a lot, I mean, again, you need this? No. But it's, it's fun to use. Do you see better results using the milk jug with pointed spout rather than Breville's rounded? Okay, so I have much better result with this because the pointy and give you a lot more control over this yes definitely but i mean this is comes with a brista express this is something you have to buy dane asks how does porter street compare to ex-wife and market lane oh goodness uh let's see porter street compared to ex-wife from uh code black you know, I'm not sure yet because we dialed in and then we just drink it. So make latte out of it. You know what? Uh, let, let's do one more shot, okay? Lane. Yeah, market lane. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put another shot for Dane's request. So let's find out what's the taste difference. I think I feel like we dialed in just right here. So, so we're going to do one more time. I think I'm going to... Someone asked me how many grams I use in non-pressurized porter filter. I, li I like to use between 17 and 18 grams. I usually put around 17.5 on this one. Whenever I use the built-in grinder. And uh, whenever, uh, whenever I use niche, they're a lot more precise. So I like to use about 17 grams. So. Okay, so let's make another coffee. Uh, someone asked me why Bravo coffee machine, the, the espresso somewhat watery to the end. It all depends on the, I don't, are you measuring your shots? But you know what, we're going to, we're going to do close look on this one. Okay. So let's do closer look because once you're dialed in, you should get a, this steady stream of espresso coming out. Okay. So let's dial in 17 gram here.
Okay, so we're gonna do Porter, yep, Porter Street. My wife told me that GB Jug is only $21 on Amazon. That is not, that's not true, okay? I hope, yeah. Is that $21 on Amazon? Has a GB Jug on it? No. Yeah. They look like GB Jug, but it's not. Okay. We don't want to waste this bean, so here we go. Okay, here we go. I got 17 in and 16.95 gram out. So it, it's a very precise, okay? Very, very precise. Okay, so I need, let's see, I need some cup here. Let's see, you know what, let's... I'm going to be using, uh, right now I'm going to be using, uh, let's see, this is a fellow, the Monte Cup here. Someone asked me what, when did start the time when? Um. Okay, I'm just going to get my scale ready. Hold that. I can use bigger kitchen, but yes. This is good for now here. All right. Um, okay, so th this is another reason I like to use a 17 gram because it's just enough to cover the pore filter. Okay, if I use like 18, it's gonna be overflow. I don't want that. Okay, it's really messy as well. So, can you time it after pressing the shot button to see the difference, please? Okay, someone asked me start time it when I start the button. Yes, that's what we're gonna do this time. Okay. okay I'm, I'm just gonna change my mode on my scale. Hold on here. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna lock it in. Oh, hold on. I'm gonna show you guys. Oops. How do you control the pump pressure of your machine? Here I'm going to go here. So this is, uh, I start the button and the start timing. So pre-infusion is about 10 seconds. So I'm looking for 34 gram. As you can see, Coffees are just streaming nicely. You see beautiful chromas there. So I got 35 gram in like 35 seconds. So 36 seconds. So that is the difference between when you start time. Around in you know, like 35 to, you know, 34 to 36 gram range. Around 36 seconds when I start the button. So I, I think that's why, I mean, that's something you need to kind of like play with. The, unless you have like scale like this, so this one senses one first drop hits, but most of us, we don't have that, this kind of scale. We have this, okay? So that's why I like to start time when I start the button because I can start at the same time. So a lot easier to measure it. So, so when I start the time, when I start the button, I'm looking for run like between 30 seconds, between 30 and 35 seconds. That's what I'm looking for. And a lot of people out there, rule of thumb is between 25 and 30 seconds. So 
uh, with this machine is somewhat different. So it all depends, okay? So make sure you play with the both methods and then come up with, you know, just make sure it takes to your shot. There's something you like. I need a, another spoon. So this is the, I'm just going to uh, start with just a straight espresso here. Cheers. It's definitely more brighter than Market Lane the other day. Definitely dark chocolate as well. It's somewhat dark chocolate that's somewhat bitter taste, but sweet. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm gonna make Americano. Uh, someone asked me about the pre-infusion uh, time. It all depends on what you guys like the taste of it. Because if you go to coffee shop, if you go to fancy coffee shop though, okay, if you go to really high-end specialty coffee shop, they can actually control the pre-infusion time. And then like machine like Slayer, uh, I know Slayer is become one of my favorite machines out there. The, you can actually adjust your pre-infusion time however you want, you know, sometimes it can be 20 seconds or 30 seconds. So, it all depend on your taste. Okay. I mean, it looks really good. Someone asked me how pump pressure coffee machine. No, it's pretty much they are preset on these machines. I know some machines you can change the overpressure valve to adjust it. You could do that. I know someone actually modified this, but I mean, personally, I won't, I won't mess with it, okay? Unless you know what you're doing. Okay, so let's try the Americano here. A little hot. Yeah, it's too hot to drink. So I'm gonna wait about a couple of minutes. Not a couple of minutes, but a little bit. Daniel's favorite is Market Lane, two quarter and whatever that other one, two and a half. Yep. And three is the Cold Black. Cold Black, yeah, Cold Black was really good there. Eh? Yeah, yeah. The um, Porter House is good with, man, I'm telling you, if you haven't tried uh, mocha, get a chocolate chips, just melt it with espresso, get a, Good steam milk. This is fantastic. Okay. And this, so this is a uh, long black using Porter Street. It's good. It's really good. Here's the thing about uh, drinking specialty coffee, freshly roast coffee. There are, man, once you start drinking it, it's really hard to go back to. Hold on. Let's see, where's my coffee? So it's really hard to go back to like. I mean, coffee like Starbucks, okay? Because Starbucks is somewhat burnt. Not the burn, but they're somewhat over roast because they have to do that because they want to be consistency throughout the world, you know, because you want to be same taste Starbucks in Tucson or Sydney. Only way to do that is you have to somewhat burn the flavor out. So pretty much the same all over the world. If you go to uh, their, uh, Starbucks, their flagship store. I think a couple of, what? I believe one in Chicago. I think it's one in Sydney. Is that Sydney or? I know over there somewhere, they're actually having a, the roastery. That place is amazing, okay? But if the most local Starbucks is, you know, is a pretty much the same, but nothing like, okay? Good cup coffee, really good cup coffee. And if, okay. Yeah, someone, uh, uh, someone told me that on the chat room, the Starbucks use pesticides. That's why whenever I roast my beans, I source out to uh, a local roaster. They only use organic beans, organic green beans. So I'm, I usually get organic and then I roast it at the shop. But again, it's all about, they are a little bit more expensive, but you know, it's, they're environmentally conscious and you know, we're trying to put less chemical in our body. Uh, let's see, any other questions? Okay. Okay, so let's recap this. So, chemical backups, 
definitely spirit resistance. They are fantastic here. And uh, I'm, I'm taking my leftover coffee to the shop. I'm going to drink that on the way to work. And let's see, I, again, back to my machine. Uh, my machine is coming out next few days. I can't wait to share that with you, the unboxing. So about the same time, around like 8 o'clock in the morning, so in mount, wait, mountain standard time. And it's going to be lots and lots of fun. And uh, what else? Uh, I got, I got a couple more things coming, so I can't wait to share that with you. And I'm, I'm still working on the complete the sh uh, Christmas gift idea. Christmas or holiday, let's put holiday gift idea, okay? And so, kind of like I'm planning on doing like under $100 and over $100, the price range. So it's going to be, uh, give you guys some ideas as well. How did you melt the chocolate chips? Someone asked me, how do I melt, uh, melt the chocolate chips? Okay. Simply espresso, put some chocolate chips in it, just keep stirring it, okay? You can melt it actually nicely. All right, uh, make sure to follow me on Instagram. I do a lot of behind the scene videos, so that's fun as well. And then see you guys tomorrow morning.